the integrative scenarios in which uh, I've taken a couple. So this is uh, basically uh, where uh, hemorrhage has caused uh, decrease in uh, arterial pressure and uh, it has uh, triggered all sorts of blood pressure regulation mechanisms. So of course, uh, any decrease in blood pressure will trigger the whole uh, timeline which we discussed yesterday of uh, uh, blood pressure regulatory mechanisms starting from baroreceptor uh, going on to uh, the renin angiotensin uh, vasoconstrictor response and then eventually going on to renin angiotensin aldosterone uh, response and in between you'll have uh, all sorts of fluid absorption uh, at the capillary level uh, going on uh, in the intermediate uh, timeline zone. So you, this is where you have acute, this is intermediate, and this is intermediate and long-term, depending on which part of the renal angiotensin system you're talking about, okay? So quick revision, uh, you, we know that a decreasing uh, blood pressure will trigger, uh, uh, will, uh, will trigger the reflex in a way that uh, it basically the stretch receptors will be unloaded, there'll be less stretch on them. This will eventually, through the uh, vasomotor center, integration center, it will increase the sympathetic flow. We've discussed this in detail yesterday. And then we'll, we all know what sympathetics can do to the heart, to the circulation, to the veins, uh, and that all is geared towards improving the blood pressure. Uh, we'll do the capillaries first. So, uh, in capillaries, this decreased hydrostatic pressure will lead to fluid absorption from the interstitium and that is supposed to increase the blood volume. We also studied uh, stress relaxation and in this case, you will have uh, some sort of a contraction at the level so that uh, the blood pressure inside the vessel will be improved. Uh, moving on to renin angiotensin uh, vasoconstrictor uh, event, uh, this is supposed to increase TPR and if you put in the aldosterone bit, uh, it is supposed to uh, uh, lead to sodium reabsorption, which then would lead to increased blood volume. And all of this is all of this is geared towards improving <clears throat> the blood pressure. Uh, a word uh, to note here uh, is the ensuing uh, half, latter half of the lecture, will be, is is basically going into some nitty gritties of hypertension. And one of the main uh, uh, causes of hypertension is kidney disease. So we will go, we'll be covering that today. And for that, I is to be absolutely very clear on renin angiotensin aldosterone access. This mechanism needs to be very clear in your mind. So you need to be very, very clear here, and, I, and I'll just say it here out loud, that renin angiotensin, or rather renin, gets secreted when you have a decreased GFR. And we've done this already, but I'm revising it for you. So it said in another way, if kidney is hypoperfused, if you decrease the perfusion of the kidney or kidneys, it will start to produce renin. Renin will then eventually lead to production of angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two effects, two main effects. One is to increase the total peripheral resistance because it's a vasoconstrictor and, and, and by this it increases the blood pressure directly and mark my words here, this is a direct effect of angiotensin 2 on, on blood pressure. And then through aldosterone, which indirectly, which will then lead to sodium reabsorption and that will lead to increase in blood volume. And that will then contribute to uh, the overall blood pressure. So in hypertension, we will be studying what if there is an increase, abnormal increase in renin which has then led to an abnormal increase in angiotensin two levels. What will happen? What will result? The result will be hypertension. Why? Because if angiotensin two over 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 uh, states uh, its uh, its uh, its uh, effects, that will lead to increase in the vasoconstriction that it naturally uh, uh, triggers. So if you really increase this this aspect here you will have systemic hypertension, okay? Because of vasoconstriction of the, of the arteries of the whole body. So that's one aspect. Uh, and this is the aspect which you will find uh, quicker. Uh, so angiotensin 2 goes up in the, in the blood 
abnormally up, the immediate effect will be uh, mass vasoconstriction and blood pressure rising. A more sustained and long-term rise in blood pressure, which will uh, uh, keep on uh, creating hypertension in the long run, mind you, is because of the raised aldosterone that this, this angiotensin 2 will keep on triggering because it is high uh, in the blood. It is one of the stimuli of aldosterone secretion. So if this is increased, naturally this will be increased as well. But this is a, the bigger problem, I would say, that if you have a high aldosterone, uh, the sodium reabsorption will be higher, abnormally higher in this individual. Uh, in other way, we, saying, we are saying that this person is retaining salt and very importantly, the water that comes with it. So water and sodium, uh, both are being reabsorbed. Or they, they are kept in the body abnormally. They are not being excreted, leading to higher blood volume. And we have discussed this already, that volume leads to pressure. If there is uh, more volume in the same cardio, fixed cardiovascular uh, system, which is closed, uh, and if you load it with more volume naturally, what, what, what are you doing? You are increasing pressure. 